King Pong, the pebble. Have you ever, when walking on a beach, especially a beach covered in pebbles, wondered why the pebbles make so much noise when they are rolled up and down by the waves? Most people think the sound comes from the pebbles banging against each other. But most people would be wrong. The sounds you hear are the pebbles talking. Of course it just sounds like stones banging against each other to you, but that is because you cannot speak pebble. Pebble is the language of the stones on the beach. Listen next time when a wave comes pounding in. The pebbles are making a happy whooshing noise as they are carried up the beach by the wave. Then listen again as the wave goes out. The pebbles make a different sort of noise, a sort of a groaning and moaning as they are hauled back out to sea. Don't want to get wet! Don't want to get wet again! That is what they are really yelling, but of course we don't understand that. The pebbles talk to each other the same way as we do. They talk about the weather, how warm or cold the sea is, what beaches they have visited and how many bathers feet they have squeezed. Because if you stand on the edge of the sea and let the waves wash over your feet, very soon all the pebbles around you will give your feet a squeeze. You try it, but be careful, it can tickle. I'm telling you all this because this story is about one pebble in particular. Pebbles don't have names, so we will call our pebble Pebble Ping Pong, because that's the noise it makes if you bounce a ping pong on the pavement. Ping Pong was on a beach with millions of other pebbles. It spent most of its day being sucked in by the sea and then being thrown out again by the sea. After about 10 years of this, Ping Pong became very bored but there was absolutely nothing Ping Pong could do about it. Pebbles don't have feet, so they cannot walk wherever they want to, like us. Ping Pong was just getting to the state of thinking about knocking itself to bits against the seawall with boredom, when that night there was a huge storm. And when I say huge, it was not just huge, it was colossal. The whole beach was pounded by elephant-sized waves, and all the pebbles were thrown high up on the beach, far higher than they had ever been before. In the morning, when the storm had passed, Ping Pong found itself sitting, not amongst the usual beach pebbles, but on top of much, much smaller stones. We are called Shingle, said one of the small stones, and if you look further up the beach, you will see our friend, Sand. Ping Pong thought the shingles it was sitting on were indeed very small. But when it looked up the beach and saw the sand, wow! Ping Pong went all hot with surprise. It had never seen such tiny pieces, tiny, tiny, tiny pieces, almost like dust and bright yellow. Ping Pong thought for a very long time and then had to ask the obvious question. What are you doing? On the beach, Ping Pong asked the sand. A tiny piece of sand next to Ping Pong looked as surprised as a piece of sand can look. We are here so that children can make sand castles with buckets and spades and bury each other up to their necks with us, added another piece of sand, and lie on us when it's nice and hot and sunny and get sunburn, a third piece of sand chipped in. Ping Pong thought that was a wonderful life to have, helping children play and grown-ups relax and get tanned. A much better life than Ping Pong had. All it did was roll up the beach when the tide came in and then roll down again when the tide went out. And sometimes it got so noisy with the pebbles screeching at each other, it gave him a pebble ache. I wish I could have a life like that, sighed Ping Pong. The laughter from the thousands and thousands of pieces of sand made Ping Pong roll over with surprise. When Ping Pong asked the sand what it was laughing at, it made the sand laugh even louder. So, decided Ping Pong, 
The sand was as mad as a sunburned sausage and spent the next two years waiting for another big storm to suck it back into the sea. The storm arrived two nights later. It was the biggest and most damaging storm of the century. Ping Pong was picked up by the sea and thrown against the sea wall a hundred times during the night, with waves as big as two hours smashed against the land. The storm lasted over a week, and when the sun came out and the wind died down and the rain went away, Ping Pong found itself on the same beach with the same thousands of pieces of sand. But Ping Pong did not feel the same as it did before. Not at all. I feel different, said Ping Pong. And when Ping Pong spoke, its voice came from all over the beach. <laughs> the sand was laughing again. Just look at yourself, giggled the sand. Ping Pong looked and looked and looked at itself. Suddenly it was tiny, no bigger than the sand next to it and it could see everywhere, every part of the beach. In fact, Ping Pong was spread everywhere, all over the seashore. This is what we are laughing at, Big of the Sand. We were all pebbles once, but the sea always breaks us into tiny pieces. Ping Pong did not mind being sand at all, especially when children came down to the beach and picked up the pieces of Ping Pong and made wonderful castles with them. In fact, he was quite happy to be sand. When the sea washed over him, he was not banged against the sea wall, and there was so much of him, he knew exactly what was going on everywhere on the beach. So Ping Pong lay in the sun and got warm and was given a wash every day by the sea and decided there could not be a better life. <laughs>